Welcome back to the Morning Buzz. Florida State will play their first international game in program history this Saturday as the college football season gets underway with week zero. Week zero, baby! They're in Dublin, Ireland. Georgia Tech providing the competition in the Aer Lingus Classic at Aviva Stadium. The defending ACC champions chasing their 13th straight conference win. They're 10 and a half point favorites as of Thursday morning to get the job done. Seminoles also going for a 16th win over the Yellow Jackets in program history. The team lost 10 players to the NFL draft, but head coach Mike Norvell grabbed 17 in the portal. Most notably, former Oregon State and Clemson quarterback DJ Uyunglele, former Colorado State D lineman Grady Kelly, and edge player, edge rusher Marvin Jones Jr. Other names as well. Uh, Georgia Tech coming off a 7 and 6 season themselves, where they earned their first bowl berth since 2018. Yeah, but these two guys, they don't want to talk about Georgia Tech. They want to talk about Florida State. Let's welcome in our former Seminoles, Danny Cannell and Brian McFadden. Gentlemen, a conference matchup right out of the gate, and they have to travel to Ireland to do it. The longest trip in school history. And when asked about how they're prepping, Mike Norvell said, we've been planning for this for 18 months. Now, look, you guys both traveled throughout your collegiate and NFL careers. Danny, what was your longest trip, and, and how does a long trip impact how you prepare as a team? You know, it's interesting. I think this is something that coaches do not like going this far. And it's part of the business now. Everyone travels. My longest trip at Florida State was all the way up to the Big Apple for a, for a game against Kansas that was at the Meadowlands, which wasn't very far, right? So there wasn't much prep for that one. In the NFL, went East Coast to West Coast. We'd go two nights before to prepare. That could be distracting. But I did actually go to Tokyo when I was on the Atlanta Falcons, but it was for a preseason game, Jeremy. But there are, there clearly, I think the biggest thing is the jet lag factor. We've, if anyone has ever traveled, you know, most people have traveled some point in their life internationally, you realize what sleep deprivation is and how your body clock is off and when you want to eat. And when you get there, you're a little bit groggy. And I do think it's interesting that Florida State only going a couple days ahead of time that they'll probably stay kind of on the same body clock, even though it is a big jump forward. And the game kicks off at noon our time here on the East Coast, but it is a five o'clock local. So I think they'll probably not do too much adjusting. They'll probably have pretty early curfew to try to get them to sleep. But my bigger concern is when they come back, like does that hangover effect impact their next game, which is against Boston College Labor Day weekend. But I don't think it's that big of a deal anymore, especially with luxury travel, getting sleep on the planes, the type of hotels and experiences they'll get. I don't think it's that significant of an edge one way or another. Yeah, for me, my longest trip while at Florida State traveling to South Bend, Indiana. And to your point about going to the Big Apple, not super far, right? But that was the longest trip. And oh, by the way, we, we became the first team to ever shut out Notre Dame at home 37 to zero, if I'm not mistaken. So that distance of travel had no issue when it came to what we did on the football field. But then we look at the NFL for, for me, when I played with the Pittsburgh Steelers, anytime we travel from the East Coast to the West Coast, we would leave our normal times when you look at leaving midday Saturday to go out west and nowadays it's so common to see collegiate teams travel uh, long distance of course the NFL you know traveling abroad also it's, it's kind of the, the new norm in football when when you look at where the game is going and for Florida State they're already there in Ireland so they have a few days to try to get acclimated as much as possible to go out and do what they need to do on Saturday but I don't think it's going to be a big issue for either side Florida State or Georgia Tech and as you guys mentioned too it's not necessarily going there it's coming back the jet lag coming back can be uh, perhaps a little bit worse uh, I mentioned DJU he replaces Jordan Travis here a quarterback position for Florida State Malik Benson the wide receiver comes over from Alabama to replace Keon Coleman and another Alabama player running back Roy Dell Williams joins Lawrence to a feely in the backfield Danny what do you expect this offense to look like right out of the gate Jeremy I think this offense is going to be physical like I don't think this is going to be an aerial attack by any means <laughs> excuse me where you're asking DJ Uyungle to go out there and throw for 400 yards and five touchdown passes I think he's going to be a do a lot of handing off to that loaded backfield that you mentioned who will be running behind an offensive line that is loaded with depth 
and experience. This is a, an offensive line that has redshirt senior, senior grad transfer, redshirt senior, redshirt senior, grad transfer. There, there is guys that have started a lot of football games. And I think with so much speculation around what DJU is going to look like, Mike Norvell wants to take the pressure off of his shoulders. And the way to do that is to establish the run game. I think clearly they'll have some element of a pass game. They'll take some shots, hopefully capitalize, uh, capitalize on some play action passes. But I think the essence of this game and in, in probably for most of the year is a physical ground and pound run game where DJU plays a little bit more of the role of game manager, you know, handing the ball off, hitting some big plays. I think physicality will be the theme of the season for Florida State's offense. Let's take a look at the additions and subtractions in terms of the offense. On the other side of the ball, they lost two All-Americans on that D-line, BMAC. The feeling is that they have some young stars that are ready to break out, especially in the defensive backfield. What do you want to see from this defense in game one? Physical play. Dominating play, starting with the guys in the trench. You talked about losing, you know, Braden Fisk and Jared Verse to the NFL. But when you look at what they have coming back in totality, I think the depth is stronger this season than it was a year ago. Starting off with Patrick Payton, a guy who's played a lot of football there at Florida State, a three-year player, junior coming up, a guy that can potentially get you double-digit sacks. You talked about Marvin uh, Marvin Jones Jr. Mm -hmm. transferring from UGA. And when you look at him, he's one of the players you want to have get off the bus first. He instantly makes the all-look team around 6'5", close to 260, super athletic has a little bit of that Jermaine Johnson in his play when you talk about his first step and how athletic he is. And also, you can't forget about a guy by the name of Daryl Jackson who missed all of last season a year ago. 6'5", almost 340. Has quick feet like a small guy, but when you look at his stature in measurables, he's another guy you would lo love to have it off the bus first as well. So this defense, led by Adam Fuller, they should be a, a, a very, very dominating group, especially in the trenches. And when you transition to the secondary, they got potential first-round pick and a guy by the name of AZ Thomas. He's also wearing the number eight. He, tra he changed his number from 20 to eight. And the only thing I got to say to Mr. AZ Thomas, the last few corners that wore eight at Florida State, they all got drafted. <laughs> And one of them sitting with us. And for this game, gentlemen, FSU started the week 11 and a half point favorites. It's now been bet down to 10 and a half. Uh, how do you see this game playing out, BMAC? Well, the thing about week zero and week one in college football, that's the week of unknowns. Because you really don't know what you're going to get from either side. You know, you look at Florida State, you have a new quarterback, you have some new pieces on the offensive side, the same could be said on the defensive side. You don't know exactly what you're going to get. So it's kind of tread lightly when you look at the spread. Me personally, I love the total. You know, when you look at 55 and a hook, something like that, when you look at the defense that I talked about with Florida State, uh, when you look at what Georgia Tech potentially could provide with Haynes King. Um, but in all, for me, it's all about Florida State finding a way to establish a ground and pound attack. I think that would be smart. I agree with Danny. And just playing dominating defense. Make plays when the plays are there for you, DJU. You have the experience. You have a slew of running backs that can go at any given time and just allow your defense to be able to do what they need to do, which is stand up in the paint and don't allow short fields for Georgia Tech. Yeah, BMAC, I, I agree with you. I, I look at this, and Jeremy mentioned the line coming from 11 and a half to 10 and a half. About a month ago, it was close to two touchdowns. It was 13 and a half. So there's some money coming in on Georgia Tech. I'd love to wait out to the last minute, see if you get it around 10, or if it goes under 10, then I think you hammer Florida State, where I think there's some value. Um, I don't love the play because I do think there's this feeling out process of what's, you know, what p potentially are you going to see? Haynes King is a dynamic playmaker at quarterback. He concerns me with Florida State's defense as dominant as they are. Are, he can run around and make some plays and they had fits last year with Thomas Castellanos at Boston College who did the same early in the season against Florida State but I think in a close game early I think Florida State's depth along the offensive line and ability to establish the run game will allow them to pull uh, pull away late so I'll lay the ten and a half with Florida State probably not my favorite play but I'll, I'll go ahead and do it with the Seminoles. Seminoles started off 2023 with a 45-24 win over LSU they'd love something similar here thanks to our former Seminoles Brian McFadden and Danny Cannell joining us here on HQ to talk about the week zero kickoff.